Um, my name is Stan Tozer, I'm from Rhodes University. I'm an honours student uh, working under Martin Hill and Judy Kutsia. And today I'm going to chat to you about one of my honours projects, looking at the relationship between food quality and fecundity, as well as the wing form in Megamelus scutellaris. Okay. Um, Megamelus is a sap sucking plant hopper from the family of the Dolphacidae, and it's host specific to water hyacinth and originates in South America. The, the species exhibits what's called wing polymorphism, where it will produce a fully winged macropterous form capable of dispersal and a reduced wing brachypterous form which is mainly sedentary. And from the literature it seems that there, there might be an energetic trade-off between these two different wing forms in different types of situations, with the brachypterous form being a lot larger and more fecund than the smaller macropterous form. So my project has a number of core questions which we, we need to answer in order to understand this mechanism. Firstly, does nutrition have an impact on the production of egg and sperm within the species? And how does this differ between the two wing forms that we get? Thirdly, does this differ between the nutrient treatments between the wing forms? And lastly, is there an effect of maybe population density affecting the wing form ratios that come out of that. My hypothesis is twofold. In terms of nutrition, in stable densities, the nutritional quality of the host plant or the nutritional status of the water body is largely going to determine um, the ratio of the two wing forms. And in terms of uh, density, if we keep our nutrients stable, we should see a larger a shift in the wing form ratio from an acropterous or brachypterous form or in between. And I will elaborate on that in a moment. So my methods have um, changed as Graham Stein gets pretty cold in winter. But we essentially I have three nutrient treatments where I've introduced um, nitrogen, um, phosphates, and obviously iron chelate in a low, a medium, and a high concentration. And from there we measured basic plant parameters uh, that have been set out in a number of other studies. PTO length, the root length, root mass, leaf mass, etc, etc. And to do this, we actually did a study outdoors, but um, it was evident that winter was going to hamper the results. So we moved it indoors, and we created a microcosm inside, throwing water hyacinth in a circulated hydroponic system, which allows us to control for light, pH, temperature, water circulation, and allows us to monitor these plants um, in, in a more controlled fashion. We'll then introduce insects onto these plants, and from there, we are going to test the potential fecundity but through dissection of the seminal vesicle, the vas deferens, the testes, <coughs> and the ejaculatory duct. It's in this picture over here, you can see those are the testes over there. <laughs> and, there go. and this is actually a really closely related species, uh, Peregrinus matus. It's within the same tribe. Well, there's been no work done on the species, so we're just trying this out for the meantime. From there, we're going to stand with a hookst and take, uh, illuminate that and take digital photography and count the total number of sperm heads per, um, per sample. For our females, we're going to do a pretty similar, pretty similar technique, but we just dissect out the ovaries and the ovarioles and count the number of eggs inside there. And in order to quantify this in a more of a viability study, we're going to do um, reposition trials. We're counting, obviously, the number of eggs per clutch and the number of eggs of which have hatched from that clutch. And in order to analyze all of this, we'll just compare the counts between the wing forms and the macropterous and brachypterous forms and compare that across nutrient levels. In conclusion, releasable control agents should be targeted to specific requirements. And that has been highlighted in a number of talks over the past two days. Control agent efficacy and establishment probability may be highly dependent on the number of different regional nutritional status of water bodies. And if this study does show that uh, nutrients have a high degree of influence on the fecundity of megamelis, then study sites should be chosen that favor the establishment of the relevant wing form in order to increase their efficacy.